Hey friends, Jeremy Tank here. I am a branding designer and brand artist specializing in the health and wellness field. I'm in front of you today to talk about your customers because we need to think a little bit more about who they are and how we're helping them to kind of change how we're doing things in branding and how we're thinking about marketing. See, right now, a lot of people are hiring marketers that are out in the world that pretty much say, okay, we'll put uh, ads on what? Put ads on Google, put ads on Facebook, put ads everywhere, right? Marketers' job is to put information out into the world. That's what they do. They take whatever you've got and they kind of tailor it a little bit, throw a headline on it, and throw it out into the world because what they're trying to do is bring enough recognition to you so that whomever you're trying to reach, they can you know, change their opinion about whatever. You know, if you're trying to bring them in and sell them on something, that we're trying to change their opinion about you from not knowing you to knowing you, from not wanting your services to wanting your services, from not needing, what, teeth cleaned, not needing a, a, a facial treatment, not needing acupuncture, not needing a, a naturopath, not needing uh, clinical help to lose weight, uh, not needing a, a gym coach, to needing any of those things, right? That's what marketing does. It reaches out into the world. But to do that, you know, there's this thing that people have been doing, and it's called the avatar. And the avatar is sort of like this. Avatar. And the avatar says, we want, let's say, in this case, I'm going to make something up off the top of my head. We want men who are... 18 to 30 and are 50 pounds overweight and interested in changing their diet and changing their lives. Let's go ahead and write that down. Men, 18 to 30, overweight, want change. You know what? And let's say single men. Single men, 18 to 30, overweight, want change. Okay, that's a pretty good little avatar. You know, we could probably, we could probably pay place some Facebook ads based on that alone. But that's not enough for somebody who's in branding. And here's why. In branding, we're not just approaching advertising. We're not just approaching marketing. We're not just trying to run ads for you. What we're actually trying to do is create an alignment between your specific customer and your brand. That could be uh, your brand as your business. That could be your brand as your product or service. That could even be your brand as your team um, reaching out to different partnerships that you have. To understand the branding side of it, we want to get um, not just, I would call this demographics, right? A certain uh, male or female, a certain age, uh, age range, and maybe how much they make each year. I like to get into more of the psychographics realm and try to figure out, you know, what do they like? Here we go. What does, uh, what does this guy watch on television? I, I think that that would be very interesting to find out. Maybe, maybe he's into anime, right? Maybe he's into anime. Maybe this guy, um, oh, maybe he bikes to work. How, how much does he bike to work? Well, based on my experience of biking, and I, I bike quite a bit every weekend. Uh, I do about 15 to 16 miles every weekend. So to work for him, might be, let's say, three miles. Because that doesn't feel like very much to me. But I can understand somebody who doesn't really bike or not really looking at that going, oh, okay. Um, well, what does he listen to when he bikes? Does he listen to any type of music? What type of music does he listen to? Maybe he listens to, um, maybe he listens to podcasts. Maybe uh, he's got a certain couple of podcasts he likes. Let's say, um, well, I'm not going to say anything because I can't think of any podcasts at the moment. But, you know, maybe he listens to podcasts. When we start to get into this sort of realm of, of getting to a certain person, you know, marketing uses some of that data online and they can, they can do a lot of targeting. But when we're talking about branding and we're talking about those sorts of alignments, what that means is we want to build a much, much clearer picture of a very precise type of person because, honestly, uh, a single man, 18 to 30, overweight, wants change, watches anime, listens to podcasts. What does that person look like in Texas versus Seattle, Washington? 
What does that person look like in San Diego versus New York City? These are very, very different paradigms. And while you might be able through marketing to say, okay, we will target the zones when you do that, in branding, we don't target zones. Branding is about, you know, differentiating and appearing, it, it standing out in the market. So, you know, when you're branding, what you want to consider is specifically which one of those areas you might be considering. Let's go ahead and say that this guy, um, heck, I'm in Seattle, so let's say he lives in Seattle. Now in Seattle, three miles biking is not that much. And in Seattle, looking at this guy, um, that suddenly gives me a much more interesting aspect from which to target branding. Because now I can go around the city here and I can look at, um, you know, would he be renting his bike? Would he own his own bike? Uh, what are the influences he might see on the streets on his path? If we can actually create a path, I would actually walk or ride that path myself and look at the influences he is seeing along that path so that I can start to absorb and synthesize that and find a solution that is, you know, it's it's that hole in between, it's the thing that's missing. I want to find a solution that hasn't been done, that stands out from everything else. If you're going down a, a path riding a bike like that for three miles and everything is old brick buildings and gray sky and, uh, you know, bloopy trees, then when you're looking for something that's different, maybe, maybe you target a brand for this guy who wants change and he's overweight that is neon. Maybe you target something that's bright, that has a pop factor against everything that is behind it. You know, that is a zag when everything else continues to zig down a certain path. And that's what branding is. That's why we need to know, you know, not just generic demographics, but we dig really deep into psychographics and likes, dislikes. Uh, I have a whole list over here. Um, needs, wants, desires, pains, gains. You know, what is this guy's pain? What is his gain? Is he riding a bike because he wants to lose weight? Or is that just what he's doing? And so we need to actually factor in how do we stand out above that factor to help him lose weight. We start to get into a lot of mindset stuff in order to make this shift with him, right? Um, and then what does he avoid? What does he detest? These are the things that we need to know so that we don't, we don't accidentally venture into that Tory. Or if we venture there with something that we're creating, that we do it on purpose to call it out because that's the sort of thing that stands out in the market. Something that calls to you because you detest it is just as powerful as something that calls to you because you love it. If you're interested in this stuff, if this has been super helpful to you, I would love if you reached out to me, Jeremy at thinktankcreative.studio. Uh, I take on private clients every now and again. I am doing a workshop in Linwood that is the Think Tank brand workshop. We are creating a brand positioning statement, and one of the steps of that is we've got to know kind of who we're positioning for, right? We've got to understand who we're talking to because if we don't understand pretty well who we're talking to then positioning for them branding for them doesn't make any sense it's kind of like this we're get digging in deeper so that the things that we do resonate with that audience and you know i really believe in that sort of alignment if you can create an alignment between the product and or the brand the business and the audience and make sure that it's mutually beneficial relationship to both of you, that's how you start creating trust. Because you communicate on the same level, you open up opportunities for both of you to get to know each other. It's like a relationship. And I've, I've used this analogy before. You start dating, you take it kind of slow at first, and then when you get to know each other, then it's a, a really good thing. That's our time at the moment. So if you have any questions, please give me a uh, find me on Facebook, find me on LinkedIn, uh, send me an email. And if you are interested in joining my workshop, it is $400 where we will go over all this stuff. And it's a true think tank with 10 different business owners in the room helping you come up with this stuff for yourself so you're not the only one trying to think of it. Thanks, guys. Take care.